một đêm tại Thư viện Quốc hội Hoa Kỳ, tôi không biết tại sao tôi phải đọc cuốn sách ngu ngốc này. Thomas đóng sập cuốn sách cũ, màu xanh lá cây và nhăn mặt vì chán nản, cô Pinkett chăm chú nhìn Thomas. Cô có lẽ khó chịu với câu nói của anh nhưng tỏ ra không mấy quan tâm. Cô nhẹ nhàng đưa ngón trỏ lên môi và đẩy anh ra khỏi bàn làm việc, Thomas khoanh tay thở dài. Tôi thậm chí không muốn ở đây. Anh ta thở ra một ngụm lớn không khí ngột ngạt. Mốc mèo và đảo mắt nhìn cô Pinkett, trước đó, cô Pinkett mỉm cười bình tĩnh và đi đến chỗ Thomas. Một số trẻ em ở đây để đọc, và bạn đang rất thô lỗ, Thomas, này, làm sao bạn biết tên tôi, tôi đã biết rốt, cha nuôi của bạn từ khi ông ấy còn là một đứa trẻ như bạn, câu nói của anh đã tắt và anh coi đó là đủ để mở lòng với cô. Tôi không muốn ở đây. Tôi ghét đọc. Chắc chắn là có thứ gì đó bạn muốn đọc. Còn hoang ốc ác hay Moby Dick thì sao? Những câu chuyện cổ điển về, không, bố tôi nói tôi phải đọc cái này. Anh đưa cuốn sách cho cô Pinkett, và cô nhẹ nhàng lấy cuốn sách từ tay anh, A, à, to kêu A à Kimber. Cô mở cuốn sách ra giữa và chạm vào các trang như thể chúng chứa phép thuật trong đó. Đó là một cuốn sách tuyệt vời, nhưng... Tôi không nghĩ bạn thích cuốn này. Sự quan tâm của Thomas đã được thúc đẩy, tại sao không, anh hỏi, thách thức, chà, bởi vì đây là một cuốn sách thực sự hay, nhưng bạn phải thực sự chú ý đến từng từ. Ngay cả khi có rất nhiều ngôn từ tục tiểu trong đó Lời tục tiểu Như những lời nguyền rủa Anh liếm ngón tay cái và bắt đầu lật từng trang để tìm Không, bố mẹ nuôi của tôi sẽ không bao giờ ổn với điều đó Tôi mới 13 tuổi, cô Pinkett đặt tay lên đầu Thomas và vỗ về nó trong một giây Tin tôi đi, chúng ở đó trong số những thứ nhạy cảm khác Tôi chắc chắn rằng họ chỉ muốn tôi đọc nó vì tôi đã gọi người hàng xóm của chúng tôi là từ N. Từ N. Điều đó nghe có vẻ khá khủng khiếp, tôi không cố ý. Mắt anh cục xuống và bối rối nhìn xuống đôi giày của mình rằng người thủ thư đang rất bình tĩnh và tốt với anh khi cô ấy có mọi quyền được nổi điên như cha mẹ nuôi của anh. Bố mẹ nuôi cuối cùng của tôi thường gọi một người trong số chúng tôi rằng mỗi khi chúng tôi làm sai điều gì đó và người hàng xóm bắt đầu điều đó. Anh ta gọi tôi là đồ khốn vì đã ném bóng vào xe của anh ta. Tôi không cố ý tông vào xe của anh ấy, đó là một vụ tai nạn, và sau đó tôi đã rất khó chịu nên từ đó thốt ra khỏi miệng. Cô ấy im lặng trong một giây, như thể đang chìm sâu trong suy nghĩ. Hừ! Cô đấu tranh với bản thân một chút, cô thở dài và nhìn đi chỗ khác, và lại thở dài, có chuyện gì vậy? Thomas hỏi, chà, tôi thực sự muốn cho bạn xem một thứ. Nhưng tôi không biết bạn đã sẵn sàng cho nó chưa, thêm nữa, chúng ta sắp kết thúc buổi tối. Tôi đã sẵn sàng. Thomas bắt đầu nhảy nhót trong người mà không cần cử động chân, tại Thư viện Quốc hội Mỹ có một phòng đọc đặc biệt mà ít người biết đến. Tôi có thể chỉ cho bạn căn phòng đặc biệt này được không? À, bố mẹ tôi nói với tôi rằng tôi chỉ được phép nói chuyện với cô, thủ thư, điều đó có nghĩa là nếu cô ổn thì với tôi cũng không sao, rất tốt rồi. Cô Pin Kết bắt đầu đi về phía một cánh cửa lớn màu nâu. Đôi giày cao gót màu đen của cô chạm vào sàn một cách duyên dáng như thể cô đang đi bộ. Hông của cô lắc lư từ bên này sang bên kia khi cô vừa đi vừa nhẹ nhàng. Nhưng đồng thời lại mất tập trung. Cô quẹt thẻ khóa của mình và hành lang dài đột nhiên mở ra một thế giới đầy tiềm năng cho Thomas. Anh chưa bao giờ nhìn thấy khu vực này của thư viện trước đây và anh đã đến đó ít nhất ba lần kể từ khi chuyển đến cùng cha mẹ nuôi mới của mình. Họ vừa đi vừa đi, họ đi qua và đi hết cửa này đến cửa khác. Thomas ngừng đếm sau 17 tuổi và bây giờ anh bắt đầu lê đôi chân của mình một cách chán nản. Chúng ta đã ở đó chưa, không, Thomas? Căn phòng đặc biệt này dành cho những người đặc biệt. Bạn phải đặt một số công việc vào nó nếu không nó sẽ không cảm thấy đặc biệt. Cốt thôi, anh thở dài, anh đi bên cạnh cô và cố gắng đoán trong đầu cánh cửa nào sẽ là cánh cửa, nhưng lần nào anh cũng sai. Khi họ đi đến cuối hành lang rất dài, cô Pinkett dừng lại và đối mặt với Thomas. Anh phải lựa chọn, Thomas. Cánh cửa bên trái của bạn là nếu bạn thực sự tin rằng bạn đã nói từ N một cách tình cờ. Cánh cửa bên phải của bạn là nếu bạn biết mình đang nói gì nhưng vẫn quyết định nói điều đó vì cảm thấy tốt khi làm tổn thương người khác. Sẽ dẫn bạn đến một căn phòng khác, tốt thôi, tôi đã nói điều đó một cách tình cờ. Anh chạm vào tay nắm cửa bên trái và đẩy nó ra. 
trời tối, và nó có tiếng kêu cót két khi anh đẩy mình qua cửa, anh có thể thấy cô pin két đang đứng ở cuối hành lang và anh quay lại để đi qua cánh cửa mà anh đã đi qua, nhưng nó đã bị khóa. Anh ấy đã đi đến tiếp theo. A night at the Library of Congress, I don't know why I have to read this stupid book. Thomas slammed the old, green book shut and winced his face in boredom. Miss Pinkett eyed Thomas attentively. She was probably annoyed with his statement but showed little concern. She gently held her index finger up to her lips and hushed him from her desk. Thomas crossed his arms and sighed loudly. I didn't even want to be here. He's puffed in a big gulp of stuffy, musty air and rolled his eyes at MS. Pinkett. To this, Miss Pinkett smiled calmly and made her way over to Thomas. Some children are here to read, and you're being very rude, Thomas. Hey, how do you know my name? I've known Rob, your foster father, since he was a child like you. The sentence rolled off of him and he took it as enough to open up to her. I don't want to be here. I hate reading. Surely, there is something you'd like to read. How about Joan of Arc or Moby Dick? Classic tales of, no, my dad said I have to read this one. He held the book up to MS. Pinkett, and she gently took the book from his hands, ah, to kill a mockingbird. She opened the book to the middle and touched the pages as if they contained magic in them. It is a great book, but... I don't think you'd like this one. Thomas's interest was piqued. Why not? He asked, defiantly. Well, because this is a really good book, but you have to really pay attention to every single word, even if there is a lot of profanity in it. Profanity? Like curse words? He licked his thumb and started flipping through the pages to find one. No, my foster parents would never be okay with that. I'm only 13. Miss Pinkett placed her hand on top of Thomas's and patted it for a second. Trust me, they're there among other sensitive things. I'm sure they only want me to read it because I called our neighbor the N word. The N word? That sounds pretty terrible. I didn't mean it. His eyes dropped and he looked down at his shoes in embarrassment that the librarian was being so calm and nice to him when she had every right to be just as mad as his foster parents. My last foster parents would call one of us that every time we did something wrong, and the neighbor started it, he called me a bastard for throwing a ball at his car. I didn't mean to hit his car, it was an accident, and then I got so upset the word just fell out of my mouth. She got quiet for a second, as if deep in thought. Hmm. She struggled with herself for a bit, she sighed and looked away, and sighed again. What's wrong? Thomas asked. Well, I really want to show you something. But I don't know if you're ready for it. Plus, we are about to close for the night. I'm ready. Thomas began to dance around in his body without moving his feet. There is a special reading room here at the Library of Congress that few people know about. Can I show you this special room? Well, my parents told me I was only allowed to talk to you, the librarian. That must mean if it's okay with you, it's okay with me. Very well then. Miss Pinkett began to walk toward a huge brown door. Her black heels gracefully clunked against the floor as if she was waltzing. Her hips swayed from side to side as she walked both quietly but distractingly at the same time. She swiped her keycard and the long hallway suddenly opened up a world of possibilities to Thomas. He had never seen this area of the library before and he had been there at least three times since he moved in with his new foster parents. They walked and walked, they passed and passed door after door. Thomas stopped counting after 17 and now he began to drag his feet in boredom. Are we there yet? No, Thomas. This special room is for special people. 
You do have to put some work into it, otherwise it wouldn't feel special. Fine, he sighed. He walked beside her and tried to guess in his head which door would be the door, but he was wrong every single time. When they reached the end of the very long corridor, Miss Pinkett stopped and faced Thomas. You have to make a choice, Thomas. The door on your left is if you really believe you said the N-word by accident. The door on your right is if you knew what you were saying but decided to say it anyway because it felt good to hurt someone else. Thomas pouted his lips and crossed his arms. So, you tricked me. No, Thomas. No trick, whichever door you choose, will lead you to a different room. Fine, I said it by accident. He touched the handle to the door on the left side and pushed it open. It was dark, and it creaked loudly as he pushed himself through the door. He could see Miss Pinkett standing at the end of the corridor and he flayed his arms around. How'd you do that? He waited for a second as he thought about what happened. He must have fallen asleep and this was all just a dream. He turned around to go back through the door that he came through, but it was locked. He went to the next. A night at the Library of Congress, I don't know why I have to read this stupid book. Thomas slammed the old, green book shut and winced his face in boredom. Miss Pinkett eyed Thomas attentively. She was probably annoyed with his statement but showed little concern. She gently held her index finger up to her lips and hushed him from her desk. Thomas crossed his arms and sighed loudly. I didn't even want to be here. He's puffed in a big gulp of stuffy, musty air and rolled his eyes at MS. Pinkett. To this, Miss Pinkett smiled calmly and made her way over to Thomas. Some children are here to read, and you're being very rude, Thomas. Hey, how do you know my name? I've known Rob, your foster father, since he was a child like you. The sentence rolled off of him and he took it as enough to open up to her. I don't want to be here. I hate reading. Surely, there is something you'd like to read. How about Joan of Arc or Moby Dick? Classic tales of, no, my dad said I have to read this one. He held the book up to M.S. Pinkett, and she gently took the book from his hands, ah, to kill a mockingbird. She opened the book to the middle and touched the pages as if they contained magic in them. It is a great book, but... I don't think you'd like this one. Thomas's interest was piqued. Why not? he asked, defiantly. Well, because this is a really good book, but you have to really pay attention to every single word, even if there is a lot of profanity in it. Profanity? Like curse words? He licked his thumb and started flipping through the pages to find one. No, my foster parents would never be okay with that. I'm only 13. Miss Pinkett placed her hand on top of Thomas's and patted it for a second. Trust me, they're there among other sensitive things. I'm sure they only want me to read it because I called our neighbor the N word. The N word? That sounds pretty terrible. I didn't mean it. His eyes dropped and he looked down at his shoes in embarrassment that the librarian was being so calm and nice to him when she had every right to be just as mad as his foster parents. My last foster parents would call one of us that every time we did something wrong, and the neighbor started it, he called me a bastard for throwing a ball at his car. I didn't mean to hit his car, it was an accident, and then I got so upset the word just fell out of my mouth. She got quiet for a second, as if deep in thought. Hmm. She struggled with herself for a bit, she sighed and looked away, and sighed again. What's wrong? Thomas asked. Well, I really want to show you something. But I don't know if you're ready for it. Plus, we are about to close for the night. I'm ready. 
Thomas began to dance around in his body without moving his feet. There is a special reading room here at the Library of Congress that few people know about. Can I show you this special room? Well, my parents told me I was only allowed to talk to you, the librarian. That must mean if it's okay with you, it's okay with me. Very well then. Miss Pinkett began to walk toward a huge brown door. Her black heels gracefully clunked against the floor as if she was waltzing. Her hips swayed from side to side as she walked both quietly but distractingly at the same time. She swiped her keycard and the long hallway suddenly opened up a world of possibilities to Thomas. He had never seen this area of the library before and he had been there at least three times since he moved in with his new foster parents. They walked and walked, they passed and passed door after door. Thomas stopped counting after seventeen and now he began to drag his feet in boredom. Are we there yet? No, Thomas. This special room is for special people. You do have to put some work into it otherwise it wouldn't feel special. Fine, he sighed. He walked beside her and tried to guess in his head which door would be the door, but he was wrong every single time. When they reached the end of the very long corridor, Miss Pinkett stopped and faced Thomas. You have to make a choice, Thomas. The door on your left is if you really believe you said the N-word by accident. The door on your right is if you knew what you were saying but decided to say it anyway because it felt good to hurt someone else. Thomas pouted his lips and crossed his arms. So, you tricked me. No, Thomas. No trick, whichever door you choose, will lead you to a different room. Fine, I said it by accident. He touched the handle to the door on the left side and pushed it open. It was dark, and it creaked loudly as he pushed himself through the door. He could see Miss Pinkett standing at the end of the corridor and he flayed his arms around. How'd you do that? He waited for a second as he thought about what happened. He must have fallen asleep and this was all just a dream. He turned around to go back through the door that he came through, but it was locked. He went to the next.